Okay. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm happy to see that so many survived yesterday. Oh, it was really nice weather and some good excursions and uh, I guess nice dinner and wine and then raining this morning. So I'm happy to see that at least the presenters and a few more <laughs> made it here. Um, in this session here, which runs all until uh, lunch, we will talk about eDNA, which is short for environmental DNA. Metabarcode in, in particular, that's a method where we target an, a short stretch of DNA that is suitable for uh, delimiting and detecting uh, species. I don't think we'll go much more into that, into what the method is, but that's just to set the scene. It's not everything DNA, it's environmental DNA metabarcoding data that we're talking about. And uh, the session here has been organized by me and Stavas Roman and from OBIS and with the help from, from many others, uh, some of them here in the room and some maybe online. Uh, it will be a mixture of um, uh, recorded presentations and uh, presentations from, from, um, from here. Um, before launch, we will have some focus on, on databases like GBIF and the handling of DNA in, in, in those, ENA as well. Uh, and, and after launch, it will be broadening the, the, the topic a little bit to, to DNA reference databases and, uh, and some examples of, of mobiling, mobilizing this kind of data and uh, what it can be used for. So, and then there will be 15 uh, minutes of discussion in the end, in the, just before lunch. Uh, the first presentation here is from Miva and it's a recorded presentation and it should set the scene nicely, just presenting what this kind of data is and, and why we should share it. So uh, take it away, Miva. Hi everyone, my name is Miwa. Today I would like to talk about a project to make environmental DNA FAIR. FAIR stands for Findable, Accessible, Interoperable and Reusable. Oliver Berry and myself are from CSIRO, based in Perth, the country of Wajak Nunga people. Why do we need to make DNA FAIR? First of all, we need tools to support better level of monitoring before the number of environmental stresses around the world and eDNA is a very, very powerful tool for that. We collect environmental samples such as water and soil and can simultaneously identify hundreds of species from a single sample using the DNA shed into the environment. And because of its sensitivity and efficiency to detect species, it's a real, really big potential source of information about species distribution. And for this reason, a number of eDNA studies has been increased uh, rapidly. This is a review paper I did with my colleagues on aquatic eDNA studies on microorganisms. The number of studies in 2012 was only four, and then it went up to 124 papers in 10 years. So lots and lots of data have been produced and it will be produced as well in the future. So where those data go uh, when studies are published? Species occurrence data and sequencing data are often on open access um, platforms, but in various locations, for example, Dryad, ENA, GBIF, and so on. So to find them, we need to look into individual papers, find the data, find out what formats they are, because formats are also very different between studies. Then collating them together is a big challenge and takes a lot of time. So basically at this moment, eDNA data is unfair. They are not interoperable and reusable. Uh, fair eDNA data in, 
allows would allow us to do lots of things. For example, further studies at extended time and space that would be impossible to do in a single study. And those studies will uh, generate knowledge at speed. We can also increase species identification accuracy by reanalyzing them using updated reference database. And this is the beautiful nature of eDNA data that is unique to many other type of data um, whose accuracy doesn't normally change with time. And ultimately, uh, fair eDNA data will support decision making for conservation by bringing us a huge opportunity to gather better information. And these are the reasons why we need to make eDNA fair. Now we'd like to show you a few beautiful examples of shared eDNA data. This is one of them from Wilder Lab in New Zealand. And if you click to this map, then it will take you to a single sampling point. Then you can access the species list in the pictures, chart, and spreadsheet. Here's another similar type of database from Japan called Anemone Database. As you can see, there are samples collected from all over Japan and all these data are publicly available. And they also provide sequencing, raw sequencing data. ALA, GBIF, and OBIS are also implementing eDNA data platforms. And here are a couple of examples of studies where data were published through them. And as you can see, thousands of records have been downloaded and cited. So sharing data has a great impact on the study to be more visible and cited, which is a huge advantage for researchers. Now we move on to how we're going to make eDNA fair. So as you saw through those examples I gave now, there have been a huge effort to create eDNA database to make them accessible. So what do we need to do now to make them interoperable and reusable is to, uh, to mobilize the data between existing databases. How are we going to do it? We need to establish a common vocabulary for fields of data. And those vocabularies can be Darwin Core, MixS, and GBIF's uh, DNA drive data extension with a has a list of the data fields with a set of vocabularies, which most of them came from um, Darwin Core and MixS. Then uh, we can develop scripts to format the existing ones into common format. Another big challenge is to encourage eDNA researchers to share their data in a fair manner for the future data input. So many, currently many researchers make the data available, but many still don't do it. And why is that? With Tobias from GBIF, we recently ran a survey with eDNA practitioners and data scientists in Australia and New Zealand. And we identified a number of bottlenecks for data publishing. Number one reason was lack of time, which is not surprising. And also lack of standardized data format, skills to format and publish data and tools. And most of these can be addressed by setting up a common vocabulary and then developing script, but also integrated tools would be um, very uh, useful to address these challenges. And those tools can be, for example, GBIFs. Um, so Tobias and Thomas are developing integrated to um, publishing tools for eDNA data. And that would require as minimum time as possible from researchers to publish the data. So that will be uh, very useful in the future to address these challenges. And no requirements for journals. So journals do require a data sharing statement, like um, so authors have to put a statement at the end of the paper to say data is shared in such such places or data will be shared upon request. But there's no requirement for the uh, format of the data. And that's why the, the data at this moment is not there. And lack of clear guidelines, lack of awareness about data sharing platforms and tools. So people want to share data, but they don't really know how, they don't know what tools are available and where they would, should they do it. Lack of awareness about fair data practice and values. And this might be surprising for most of you who will be at the Week conference, but it's actually really common for ecologists, molecular biologists. So we really need to address these challenges. How are we going to do it? We are going to implement the standardized data format that we're going to establish um, in the journal uh, publication procedures. Uh, we've been working for this uh, with Wiley Journals editors, 
uh, Wiley has a lot of um, some journals that are highly relevant to eDNA, for example, environmental DNA, obviously, but also uh, molecular ecology, ecology and evolution. And all these journal editors are very keen to do so because they see the value of fair data and they also see the value of eDNA data. They also notice and recognize the issue, current issue that data is not fair. And so this is a real opportunity because it's a gate that almost all eDNA data sets pass through. And we're working on it now and plan to conclude it in the next 10 to six months. Then we will establish guidelines that will be published and also implemented into journals, authors' guidelines. We will run a workshop so that we can raise awareness um, about fair data practice and what kind of tools available. We can help them to develop the skills to do so. Um, so now I would like to recap my talk. Uh, why do, do we need to make to make eDNA fair because eDNA data is a remarkable and needed resource, but currently unfair. How are we going to do it? We are working with existing databases, journals, eDNA practitioners. We will define the data vocabulary and create formatting tools. This project has been launched. We're from CSIRO and um, we are working with a number of our organizations. And please get on board. The key for this project is collaboration with eDNA practitioners and anyone who are enthusiastic for fair data practice like us. So please come and talk to me. Unfortunately, I'm not on site uh, at this moment, but uh, please reach me out by email and I would love to talk about the project with you. Finally, I would like to thank for a number of collaborators, especially Tobias from GDIF. And also I would like to thank you for listening to my talk today. Thank you, Miva. Uh, I, you are online as far as I know, and I guess we have time for a question if there should be one. I'm not monitoring the the Slack or the online things. Uh, okay. okay. It seems like there are problems with the Miva sound. So maybe if anybody has questions, we could take them later in the general questions round at the end of this this symposium. I think that's what we do. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? We hear you now. Yes. Great. Thanks Sorry, for the presentation. I cannot hear anything here. So. In case you're hearing me, I would love to receive any questions, feedback. Okay, you can hear me. Oh. Sorry, can I can't hear you at all. We will write the. I would love to receive your questions and feedback on the chat or email um, because um, I won't be able to. Okay. Okay, I guess you can. Um, ask me a question in the chat, and then I can still talk back to you. Will somebody write to Miva that, we, that work? We, we take the questions later? We'll do that. Then we will continue to the next presentation, which is me. I failed to say that we have uh, Veronica here uh, as a timekeeper. She will notify me when there's three minutes left and one minute left. I might ignore okay. it. I take a question later. Yeah, that would be yeah, fine. I hope I can uh, fix my headset before that. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>